power. We thank you for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you will still do. We are asking, O oh Lord, that today the power of resurrection will be manifest in every life in Jesus' name. Quicken your people. Energize your people. Empower your people. That Lord, according to your word, there will be total redemption, resurrection, righteousness for everyone in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can be seated. Today we come to the message on resurrection. We are very dealt with crucified with Christ. The old self, the old man, the old habit, the old disposition, the old depravity crucified with Christ. And now life is different because that old nature had been crucified completely with the Lord crucified with Christ and then we dealt with dead and buried with Christ dead to sin dead to the Adamic nature dead to all the manifestations of sin you are dead to anger dead to alcohol dead to the fear of man dead to the flesh dead to evil in every way dead to self and dead to all the suggestions of satan dead and then that old life is buried completely buried out of sight that all those things that used to knock you down all the things that made you compromise in the past all the things that made your life totally sinful without righteousness as you are dead with Christ all those things are buried with him and now after the resurrection after the death after the burial there is resurrection somebody help me shout resurrection, resurrection. and so we come today to reason with Christ. Colossians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And then in verse 2, search your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. If we're risen with Christ, there's a change. There's a transformation. We're saved, we're sanctified, we're made holy, and our affection, our love, our desire, our ambition, our aspiration, search on things above, not on material things on earth not on the mundane things of the world search your affections like you search a watch like you search an alarm and you say at this time i set it for the alarm to ring now you set your love you set your ambition you have set everything within you to look up to the time when Christ will come. And you're setting your affection and your love. Not on the things on the earth. In verse 3, for ye are dead. For ye are dead. For ye are dead. You are dead to all those situations of life. The things that used to attract you and the things that used to put you and pull you and the things that used to drag you down and to live the old life all that is dead and you are dead to 
I mentioned it yesterday. All those properties in the village that something will jolt you. I mentioned it yesterday that when you are dead, that alcohol will not attract you anymore. The cigarette will not have attacked, attract you anymore. And all those things of the world, you are dead to them. And you stand for Christ and stand with Christ without any compromise in your life. For ye are dead. Of course, you are still alive in the physical, but you are dead to the scorners and dead to the evil and dead to the persecution and you are dead to everything for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God and then in verse 4 when Christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory give me a good potter cut amen yeah. Risen with Christ, crucified, dead, buried, risen, new life for everyone in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the realization and revelation of his resurrection. The realization and revelation of his resurrection number two our redemption and righteousness through his resurrection number three the rejoicing and rapture at his return is gone to heaven and is coming back again and then at that time will be our rejoicing at the rapture when he returns look at number one number one the realization and revelation of his resurrection three things we're looking at number one the reality of his resurrection not a story and it's not just something like you read in the novel this is real the reality of his resurrection number two the revelation of his resurrection and then number three our regeneration through his resurrection number one the reality of his resurrection you can read that from matthew from mark from luke and from john he rose he died he was buried and he rose again and the reality of that the recognition of that the realization of that that christ died they saw him dead and he was buried they knew where he was buried and then on the third day a glorious day he rose from the dead look at john chapter 20 verse 24 in john chapter 20 verse 24 but thomas one of the twelve called didymus was not with them when christ came he had risen from the dead he had appeared to his own disciples and then were told Thomas, one of the twelve was not there. When Christ came and showed himself and revealed himself, risen Lord unto them. Look at verse 25. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. Heroes, we have seen the Lord. We have seen the risen Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print 
of the nails and out and put my finger in the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. He said, Resurrection, Christ risen. I know he was nailed to the cross. I must put my finger in the bridge of the nails before I can believe that. I know that one of the soldiers threw a spear on his side. I must thrust my hand inside the wound, the opening, before I can believe. In verse 26, we're told, and after eight days again, his disciples were with him, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Verse 27. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold, my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believe me verse 28 and thomas answered and said unto him my lord and my god he realized that christ indeed rose from the dead Verse 29, Jesus says unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen, hast seen me, thou hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. We are not there, but we are blessed. I said we are blessed. I said we are blessed because we are not like Thomas. Thomas, you believe now because you have seen it. But blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. That's number one, the reality of his resurrection. Number two now, the revelation of his resurrection. What's the difference? The reality of his resurrection and then the revelation of his resurrection here is the difference the disciples the 12 apostles they were the apostles of christ they saw it when he was arrested they saw it when he was betrayed they saw it when he was crucified they saw it when he died and now they saw him the same Christ when he rose from the dead. But there were people that were not there when he suffered, when he was betrayed, when he was crucified, and when he rose again. Saul of Tarsus at the revelation given to him. People after that for century they had the revelation given to them of the resurrection of Christ. Look at First Corinthians chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 4. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Verse 5. And that he was seen. After he rose of servers, seen of the twelve, look at verse six, and then he said, After that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain until this present hour, but some. Have fallen asleep. Look at verse 7. It says, After that, it was seen of James, and then 
of all the apostles together. Verse 8, at last, it was seen of me also. At last, it was seen of me also. And I can tell you by revelation that Christ was crucified, who died, rose again because at last he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time by coming into number three here number three our regeneration our recreation our reformation our transformation through his resurrection now, if you just know the story of the resurrection in the hedge, that doesn't bring regeneration. If you just know the story of the revelation by reading, that doesn't bring regeneration. But when you come to the Lord with your soul, with your spirit, with your heart, and you believe in that resurrection, that faith in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ brings a regeneration, a transformation, a recreation in your life. Our regeneration through his resurrection. Look at Titus chapter 3, reading from verse 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Verse 6, in verse 6 we are told, which is shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Then in verse 7, that being justified by his grace, the grace, the mercy, the love, the compassion, and the virtue from heaven that comes upon our lives because of that resurrection, now justified, now forgiven, now set free, now transformed, be justified by his grace. We should be made as according to the hope of eternal life. Look at Acts chapter 4, reading from verse 10. Acts 4 verse 10, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead. God raised him from the dead. Even by him does this man stand here before you all. Verse 11. This is the stone which was set at naught of your builders, which is become the hedge of the corner. And then in verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, but for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's through that resurrection and the risen Christ that forgiveness comes, that salvation comes, that righteousness comes, that regeneration comes to everyone, everyone that believes. Acts chapter 5, verse 13. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Verse 31. It says, Him. As God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. 
he rose from the dead and it is that resurrection and the power of that resurrection that makes him the savior of everyone who repents and believes on the lord for to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sins we're looking at point number two point number two our redemption and our righteousness through his resurrection resurrection it's not just you know going on the street raising up palm fronts dancing it's not the celebration of the worldly minded it's not the dancing of the worldly minded it is not the exchanging of gifts by the worldly minded that shows that we believe in the resurrection the resurrection of christ brings redemption it brings righteousness into every life as we believe on him look at ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 ephesians 1 verse 7 in whom we have at the present moment we have this present day we have a present experience we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace verse 13 in verse 13 in whom he also trusted after ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with the holy spirit of promise verse 14 which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory verse 20 it says which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead the scripture telling us every time in the new testament in the gospels in the epistles that he rose from the dead and then he tells us the consequence of that resurrection from the dead and he set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places verse 21 far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come verse 22 and has put all things under his feet because he rose from the dead because he's no more in the grave and because the power of the highest has lifted him up from the grave and is now seated on the right hand of majesty on high he the almighty god has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church verse 23 which is his body the fullness of him that feeleth all in all three things here number one righteousness by faith number two renewal in fullness number three responsibilities of the faithful all because of the resurrection number one righteousness by faith in his resurrection we're looking at romans chapter 10 and we're reading from verse 6 romans chapter 10 reading from verse 6 
For the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Already he came down. Already he showed us the way. Already he revealed the might of the Almighty unto us. It's come down so that we don't have to say who oh, will go up to heaven and bring him down. Look at verse 7. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up again from the dead. That's done already. The power of God came, rolled the stones away. It was like an earthquake. And with that earthquake, all those soldiers, they fell to the ground as if they were dead. And then Christ, a Savior, a Redeemer, a Substitute, the Sacrifice, the Lamb of God rose from the dead. And then we're told in verse 8, it says in verse 8, but what says each? The word is nice thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. You see that the resurrection has happened already. The reality of that resurrection. The resurrection has happened already. The revelation of that resurrection and our regeneration, our coming to God, is effected by that resurrection. Is now for you as an individual that you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Amen. Thou shalt be saved. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 10 for what the heart. Man believeth unto righteousness. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. You know, when you believe, that belief will move you from where you were. Sinfulness will move you forward into righteousness. Don't believe those people that say, I believe, I believe. They're still in their past lives. I believe, I believe. They're still drinking sin, smoking sin, eating sin, covered with sin. I believe, I believe. They're still in the life of the past life. The past ideas and the past resurrection and the past, uh, the past evil, the past life they live. When you believe, there is a difference in your life. If you are not a nominal Christian, a church goer, just somebody going in, crawling in and crawling out like an ant, like a worm. If you truly believe, it says, for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Do you see the connection there? Salvation and righteousness. Righteousness and salvation. If there's no righteousness, there's no salvation. If there is salvation, there'll be righteousness. If you truly believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, a change, a transformation in your life, and you move from unrighteousness into righteousness. Give me a good amen if you are there. Yeah. Romans chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 22. It says, therefore, 
it was imputed to him for righteousness. Verse 23, it says now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed unto him. Verse 24, but for us also, for me also, for you also, we believe in the same Christ. We see Christ. And the first century Christians believed and they became saints. Saint Paul, Saint Peter, Saint John, Saint Believer, by believing on Christ, the same Christ, the same resurrection, the same experience of salvation. If we truly believe today, we're no more sinners. We're saints in Christ. The Lord make you a saint. What's your name? I said, what's your name? Say, saint. Saint. But I got people, you have lost your voice. Saint. May God make you a saint. And the life and the attitude and the action of saintliness be in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Let's look at number two here. Number two, renewal in fullness renewal in fullness by his resurrection when somebody is weak tired weary exhausted shoulders down legs wombling backbone bent and he's walking you can tell he needs renewal you know in our lives as Christians, you've been a Christian believer, real believer, for a number of years now. To read the Bible, your eyes are dim. To live and stand for righteousness, uncompromising. You're wumbling. You can't stand. You couldn't stand like you were standing in your earlier year, years of the Christian faith. And to earnestly contend for the faith was delivered unto the saints. Uh -uh. You are not as sharp as you were in the earlier years. You are dull. You are dreary. And it appears you are drying up. Anemic. No strength. No power. But as we come... And we declare the resurrection of Christ. And that resurrection power afresh and new comes upon your life. A renewal. But I call a renewal. Nigeria, a renewal. Africa, a renewal. Asia, America, Europe, when that new power of the resurrection comes upon your life, a renewal in Jesus' name. Your mind renewed. Your heart renewed. Your energy renewed. Your power renewed. Your sharp sight vision renewed. There is a renewer. There is the fullness of renewal by the resurrection of Jesus. And I pray this day, renewal. In your personality, renewal. In your conscience, renewal. In your heart, renewal. In your inner man, renewal in Jesus' name. You know, when you've been using that car for some time, 
Now the engine is growing old. The body is growing old. Even the steering growing old. Sometimes it will, you know, be stiff or safe. You cannot move it again. And then you take it back to the place you got it. And they renew it for you. And they renew every part, every knot, and every part they renew. And then you take it back again. You put the key inside. Even the sound is different. The movement is different. And everything there is different. That's what renewal does in our heart, in our spirit, in our soul, in our behavior, in our action. The race in renewal, not partial renewal, renewal in fullness by the resurrection of Christ. Look at Romans chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 11. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, not in your head, in your heart, dwell in you, not just in knowledge, in experience. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. I didn't hear a good amen there. Amen. Quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Look at chapter 6, reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. When you believe that resurrection, and the resurrection of Christ takes effect in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit, in your life. The power that raised him from the dead will also make you to walk in newness of life. In verse 5, it says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Verse 6, knowing, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Amen. Henceforth, we should not serve sin. Whoever you serve, that's your master. Servants serve masters. If you're serving sin, sin is your master, not the savior. If you're serving self, self is your master, not the savior. And, and guess, if you're serving Satan, Satan is your master. You read the Bible from cover to cover. If you're serving Satan, you may come to every meeting, every retreat, every revival, every crusade. If you're serving sin, sell Satan, sin is your master. Self is your master. Satan is your master. But when you come to Christ and you experience the power of his resurrection, 
henceforth from now on in the private in the public in the crowd all alone by yourself henceforth you should not serve sin i will not serve sin look at your voice i will not serve sin some people talk as if I don't want sin to hear so that sin does not say, uh-uh, you said you will not serve me, then come and grab me. And so they talk, I will not serve sin. I will not serve sin. I will not serve sin. I will not serve Satan. Now, sin will come and say, what did I hear you say before your pastor there? You said you will not serve me, and then they will threaten you. You see, what I said in church is what I said at home, is what I do in the community. I will not serve sin. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 18 there. In verse 18, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Look at verse 22. In verse 22, but now be made free from sin and become servants to God. You become the servant of righteousness and uh, holiness looking at ephesians chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 23 ephesians chapter 4 and we're looking at verse 23 and be renewed renewed we're talking of total renewal we're talking of renewal in fullness we're talking of renewal in your heart in your mind, in your soul, in your life. We're talking about renewal. Renewal of your character. Renewal of your behavior. That when Christ, the risen Christ, comes to reign in your life, your life is renewed. Your behavior, your character is renewed. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And then in verse 24, it tells us, and that he put on the new man before you can put off your new clothes you put off the old clothes the one smelling the one that is thinking the one that is odious odious to you odious to man odious to heaven odious to earth put that off and then the new character and the new behavior and the new lifestyle that he put on the new man which after god is created in righteousness and true holiness i pray it will be fulfilled in every life you know there are people they come to retreat then they go out of the retreat like they walk before the retreat they're still like that after the retreat Nothing renewed, nothing changed, nothing transformed, but for you. I was talking to somebody there. For you, this will be different in Jesus' name. Total renewal, complete renewal, renewal in fullness by his resurrection. First Peter chapter 1. We're looking at verse 3. First Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope. How did he do that? By the resurrection of of Jesus Christ from the dead. He has begotten us unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Then in verse 4, it says, to an inheritance incorruptible 
and undefiled that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. Verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Number three here, responsibilities of the faithful for the resurrection. The responsibilities of the faithful now that you are saved, crucified by Christ, you are sanctified, you are dead and buried by Christ, and your life is renewed. You are risen with Christ. You have responsibilities. Look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. What's your responsibility there? Seek those things which are above. Look at your life. From morning to evening, from the first day of the week to the last day of the week, what do you pursue? What do you seek? What do you run after? Your responsibility after experiencing the resurrection of Christ is that you will seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, set your affections on things above. Now, if you a pilot, for example, when you take off from the ground and you search the flight in a particular direction, heading home, heading to your destination, you have to stay at that and be doing changes that will still point you to the destination. Otherwise, if you just set it, and then you forget about it, you will land in another destination. The same thing with a Christian life. You search your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. And as you go from day to day, if you just leave it like that, and you don't keep on changing it, moving it in the direction of things above, it, you'll be derailed by the wind. You'll be derailed by the clouds. You'll be derailed by everything around you. But every time you say, I'm headed for glory. I'm headed for heaven. I'm headed for the mansions on high. And therefore, you keep on setting your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. First Peter chapter 3, reading from verse 10, responsibilities of the faithful. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking Girl, that's your responsibility. You'll watch over your tongue, your lips, your mouth. He that will love life, life now, and life to come, and see good days, good days here on earth. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no girl. Look at verse 11. It says, Let him eschew evil, shun evil, detest evil, depart from evil, jettison, push aside evil. 
Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace. Let him seek peace. You know, a person who is headed for heaven was Christ, our peace, living on the inside of him, on the inside of her, will be seeking for peace in every situation. He will not be the initiator or the organizer or the motivator or the originator of confusion, of commotion, of strife, of violence, of anger, of fighting. He will be the originator, the initiator, and the one that is seeking after peace. He will not be seeking to make the other man angry. Make the other man furious. Make the other man jolted. Make the other man get ready to fight. No, a person is on his way to heaven. Anytime, every time, let him eschew evil and do good and let him seek peace. And ensure it and see it. Verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Amen. Amen. We're coming to point number three the rejoicing. And the rapture at his return well, will rejoice. You will rejoice. You know, when Christ comes, there will be people that will say, And I know. Judas regretted, And I know. Samson regretted, And I know. The people that know the way to heaven and the way to glory and the way was spread before them. And they could easily have taken that way and they did not. When the Lord comes, they'll be like the foolish virgins and they would say, And I know. Then the wise virgins would have gone in. And then later, the foolish virgins will come and knock at the door, Lord, Lord, open unto us. It's too late. Had I known. But this is the time to envisage, to imagine, to expect the rapture that will take place at any time and to get ready so that the rejoicing of that day will be yours in Jesus' name. Rapture. Look at three things here. Number one, our right through relationship with Christ. Number two, the rapture of the righteous in Christ. Number three, the rewards of those who rise and are raptured by Christ. Look at number one. Our rights through relationship with Christ. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 32. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not? Was him also freely give us how many things? All things. That's all right. When you come to Christ and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, on the risen Christ, they freely will give you all things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. After that, 
all these things shall be added unto you. He will freely give you all things. Are you still there? I said he will freely give you all things. Healing. Deliverance. Health. Prosperity. Good things. A good wife. A good husband. Great children. Success. All right. All right. When we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he will freely give us all things. I'm going to make it personal. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him for me. How shall he not freely with him give, give, Give me all things. Through your life. I proclaim it and prophesy to your life in Jesus' name. Look at number two here. Number two, the rapture of the righteous in Christ. The rapture. The rapture. You will not miss the rapture. Now tell me, what's the good I come to the church. Was the good I read my Bible? Was the good I made restitution? Was the good I evangelize? Was the good I give, I give, I pay tithes and offering? Was the good I attend all these retreats? Was the good? Even when we have to stay in the sun, I stay in the sun. What's the good? I stay there in the sun, and then the rapture happens. And the saints go marching in. And because of infighting with your wife, infighting with your husband, hatred, unforgiving spirit, and because of initiating fight. And violence, the rapture takes place, and then he's nowhere to be found. She's nowhere to be found. I pray that will not happen unto you. First Corinthians chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 51. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed. Verse 52. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And we shall be changed. And we shall be changed rapture it will happen yeah. and I pray you will not miss the rapture yeah. first Thessalonians chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 14 the rapture you know there are people they have a habit of delaying reconciliation you and your wife you are like in a tournament of fighting, exchanging words, brutal words, angry words, thunderous words. And it was night. And then with that anger, with that thunder, with that exchange, she goes to her room, you go to your room. And while you're still lying down there, you are angry, angry, angry. And then you even remember some bad words you should have said, which you didn't remember at that time. But you couldn't get up. You said, that's enough tonight. And then in the night, the rapture takes place. Where is the reward and the result 
of all these years of labor and years of denial and years of this and years of that the rapture can take place anytime night or day here you are you have a mate at home your wife is gone to visit her parents or to do some other things and now the flesh is calling wife is not around to satisfy the flesh or maybe wife is even around but you're forgotten about being crucified with Christ dead and buried with Christ and risen with Christ and then privately you and the mate you do whatever you are doing and then the rapture takes place look at this man been loud in testimony I am saved I am sanctified I am filled with the Holy Ghost I talk in tongues there you are the flesh has not released you and the rapture takes place look at that man money money Gehazi is being the servant of the man of God and now look at money on the bench there look at money in the offering bag and he said I'm out of work I need money and he puts his sand and he steals from God in the house of God and when they are leading prayer brethren pray tonight it's going to be great God will do this God will do that is shouting and praying meanwhile stolen money is in your account and it's there and you're spending stolen money and the rapture takes place and then we are gone he tries to jump my brother covetousness will not allow you to make it where will you be after all this profession of religion after all the participation in religion where will you be when the rapture happens what will be your joy that a million naira hindered you from eternity with god what will be your joy that 10 minutes of fleshly pleasure with a mage with a harlot with a strange woman hindered you from making the rapture everybody knows you here you're popular and whatever you tell people to do that's what they do good or bad and then as popular as you are the rapture takes place and you are nowhere to be found what will be your story at that time First Thessalonians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Verse 15. For this was say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them that are asleep. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. I was the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. I will be there. I will be there. So shall we ever be 
was the Lord. Amen. Amen. Look at number three here. The rewards of rising and raptured by Christ. By the grace of God, you are saved, you are sanctified, you are holy, you are righteous, you are persevering, you are enduring every time until the end, great will be your reward. Amen. Your reward will be great. You know, faithfulness to God, devotion to God, consecration to God, commitment to God, rain or sunshine, sunshine or rain, pressure or pleasure, difficulty or challenges, persecution or no persecution, you'll stay where you are, you will not miss your reward. Look at Revelation chapter 22, and I'm reading from verse 12. Revelation chapter 22, and we're reading from verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. To give to my brother, my sister, my boy, my son, my daughter, everyone there to give to everyone. The Lord will give you the reward. Behold, 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 I come soon. I come suddenly. I come quickly. And my reward is with me. It's coming for you at the rapture. And it will give to every man as his work shall be. Am I waiting for any reward there? I said, are you waiting for any reward there? Why don't you stand up and say, Lord, whatever happens, I will not miss my reward. Saved, I will not miss my reward. Sanctified, I will not miss my reward. Crucified with Christ. Dead and buried with Christ. Risen. Where Christ, on that final day, when the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive, we shall be raised together with them, cut up to be with the Lord forever and ever, I will not miss my reward. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.